So wait, you're telling me that Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Hershey, Pennsylvania, are different places? Pete, I don't think you're right. I think you're wrong. Well, I mean, I'm Luke Owen of Wrestle Talk, and I don't make mistakes. Support Wrestle Talk. Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk News. I'm Luke Owen, and this is Wrestling News. Let me let me tell you a story about Cody Rhodes. He was pegged to be a big star in WWE, but saddled with lame gimmick after lame gimmick, and was eventually released by the company. So he bet on himself and made an even bigger name for himself on the independent scene, and then took a bet with Dave Meltzer to sell out a show with 10,000 seats, a feat that hadn't been done since the days of WCW. He, along with the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, made this a reality with All In, and that became All Elite Wrestling, the first viable competition to WWE. WWE since the fall of WCW in 2001. I'm so sorry, TNA. It brought about actual change in the wrestling industry, and then Cody left his position as one of the executive vice presidents of AEW to rejoin WWE. He beat Seth Rollins on three straight pay-per-views and tore his tin in the process, made his return to win the Royal Rumble, and was all set to finish the story at WrestleMania and face the all-conquering Roman Reigns to win the WWE Championship, a title that had eluded him and his father for all of those years. And then he lost. LOL. But it's okay, because as Triple H explained in the Mania post-show press conference where no muffins were consumed, stories don't end in WWE, apart from all of those times that they have. And Steve Austin said that he thought it would be a cliche for Cody to be crowned as WWE Champion at WrestleMania, even though Austin was crowned as World Champion at several WrestleManias. And consummate thick thing spouter Rodog felt that Cody hadn't gone through enough adversity apart from you know, all that adversity that I spelled out at the top of this news episode. And then Cody and Roman were drafted to different shows with a new world title being introduced that would be exclusive to Raw. It left a lot of questions, the main one being, are we going to finish the story? Well, the rumor is that yes, yes, we would. There's been fan speculation that Cody could win Money in the Bank and challenge Roman for a rematch at SummerSlam. But the persistent rumored plan is that Cody and Roman will have their rematch and actually finish the story at WrestleMania 40 next year in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now, is that actually Philadelphia or is it Hershey, Pete? But now, according to Worked Wrestling, that might have changed. According to the Twitter account, discussions have taken place for WWE Raw's main event for WrestleMania 40 to be potentially Cody Rhodes versus Gunther. They add that both men have expressed an interest in working together, but also note that these are early discussions. So what does that mean for Roman and Cody? Well, if Cody versus Gunther is Raw's main event for Mania 40, that would mean that one of them will be walking into the show as the World Heavyweight Champion, after all that world title is exclusive to Raw, unless, of course, Cody does beat Roman for the Universal Championship and that switches brands and then the, the World Heavyweight Championship also switches brands. Or it could just be that Cody versus Gunther will be one of the five main events on the show. You know, like how this Saturday sees three main events. You know, there's only seven matches on the card. It means almost half of the matches are main events. Sounds silly when you say it out loud, doesn't it? But what do you think of Cody versus Gunther at Mania? Other than that sounds like an awesome match, which it really does. But what do you think it means for Cody finishing his story? Let me know in the comments down below. But Cody versus Roman's rematch being potentially scrapped might not be the only major change coming to WWE. Over the last few years, Nick Khan has become one of the most powerful men in all of professional wrestling. He's been credited for several of WWE's biggest deals in the last couple of years and is cited as the man behind the idea of changing WWE's pay-per-view days from Sundays to Saturdays. And that's been a huge win for them. And speaking at JP Morgan's Global Technology Media and Communications Conference, which, well, well, it's a conference for media business suit people who say lots of business, business things. I'm sure business cards were handed out and such. Khan had a lot to say about the state of WWE's TV deals. He said that while Raw won't be leaving its three hour format, that's far too valuable to the company, they are open to moving it from Monday night when it comes to negotiating their new TV deal. Not only that, but they're open to the idea of adding a third hour 
onto SmackDown to make that more appealing to potential bidders. Now, the interesting note here is that Khan has said that SmackDown is out of the exclusivity window for Fox bidding on renewing the rights to the show. So does that spell the end to the WWE Fox partnership that's been so fruitful to them since 2019? If Fox were keen on keeping the show, they would have secured the renewal during that exclusive window rather than letting other networks bid on the show. Khan also adds they are still in the window for NBCU for Monday Night Raw, but there was an interesting alternative that Khan brought up as a potential new home for Raw and SmackDown. Amazon Prime. He said at the conference that Amazon are currently looking to program specific nights of the week for certain shows, and that is why he's opened the idea of moving Raw and SmackDown off their Monday and Friday nights. He also teased the idea of a new show for WWE once all of the TV rights deals are sorted, which might be targeted more towards their adult audience. He also said that the third hour of Raw could become more adult orientated in the future. A lot of Khan's movements are based on leverage. He said at the conference that the reason why WWE are doing more overseas pay-per-views is not really because fans want them, but because they want to match up media right negotiations with those territories and they get a big payout for doing them. So that might be why Money in the Bank is being held in London in July, as the UK rights deal with BT Sport is one of the next media cycles that WWE are looking to tackle, with Khan saying that both BT Sport and Sky are interested. And speaking of changes, it's been reported by Fightful Select that there were several changes made to this week's episode of Raw, noting there were new rundowns brought out shortly before the show. One of those changes was Paul Heyman's role on the show, which was originally just him sitting in the front row with a visitor's pass. Worked Wrestling had previously reported that Shinsuke Nakamura was set to team with Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens in the main event, and that JD McDonough was supposed to have his in-ring debut for Raw, but both were changed at the last minute. Fightful also note that several of the recently drafted NXT call-ups were not brought in for the TV taping. Take this for what it's worth, but Sean Ross Sapper Fightful writes, we're told there were changes and one talent speculated it was due to Vince McMahon, but they are unable to confirm that. Not that it particularly helped the show anyway, because it was killed by sports. This week's edition of Raw drew 1.64 million viewers, which is not only down from last week, but also one of the lowest ratings of the year. But there shouldn't be any signs of concern because the sports game between the Lakers and the Nuggets drew 8.21 million, so, sorry, Nuggets. There's a sports team called the Nuggets, like chicken nuggets, or like a nugget of shit. And as Dave Meltzer writes on Figure 4, to show the change in the audience to much younger viewers, even though total audience was down 18 to 49, was up 31% from one year ago, and 18 to 34 was up 38%. And factoring in homes lost to USA Network, the real percentage changes were viewers basically even. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ugh, poopy trim. Sorry. Oh, that was boring. Well, I guess that means it's actually time for me to do absolutely nail once again my NXT one minute, one take, you know, like I did last week, despite what Pete said and despite Pete trying to distract me with his time and stuff, right? So let me get my timer up. Ooh, I could, I could join a, a session. Someone is listening to something on Spotify, but I, I won't do that. I won't distract myself. Timer. And the set. One minute. Right, I'm actually gonna press start this time. Okay. Okay, here we go. NXT, one minute, one take, three, two, one, let's go. Like here, no, nope, Ly Lyra, no, oh, damn it. Lyra Valkyria, no, nope. Lyra Valkyria beat Cora J to advance in the finals of the vacant women's women's championship. Jade attacked Lyra after the match with a kendo stick, which will likely play into the finals on Saturday. Dijak attacked Ilya Dragunov backstage and Yava Dabaketo beat Axiom because he's big. I'm sure that'll get over. Reggie made the save after the match. Tony D'Angelo was interrogated by the police and later arrested and Brim Bruckles cut a promo saying that he was going to beat Carmelo Hayes this weekend. Hayes also got a video promo about being from Boston. Austin. Gallus with new green light had a brawl with Stax and the Creed brothers and Tyler Bate had a chat with Wesley backstage. There was a lot of chatting on the show. I'm running out of time. Uh, finally, we got some wrestling, but it wasn't very long as Tyler Bate beat Eddie Thorpe and because everyone else was doing it, Joe Gacy attacked Bate before the match, sorry, after the match, and Wesley ran down to make the save. Nathan Frazier beat Noam Dar and Dijak and Dragunov continued to brawl. Hank Walker and Tank Ledger in a battle of the made up names uh, and Bron Brockle attacked them both. Sadly, no one made the save for them. Uh, Gigi Dolan and uh, the other one had, I've uh, got a cage match next week and Tiffany Stratton beat Rock and Perez to advance to the finals, and then there were more brawls. Yeah!
was close enough. And to round things off, there's a quick update on the situation between CM Punk and AEW. It was reported last week by Dave Meltzer that AEW had Daily's place as a backup option for the first episode of Collision next month in case they couldn't get CM Punk on the show. The original building is reportedly going to be the United Center in Chicago, and it may still be that if Punk is there, but that probably won't be confirmed until tonight. But Righteous Reg of Grapsity has said that the Daily's place rumor is totally false, saying, I went myself in search of the answer to this, and there's nothing to that rumor. There's just some random person online getting to Dave Meltzer and kind of getting this rumor started up. That's a nothing rumor. And that's been backed up by Sean Ross Sapp over on Fightful Select, who says Daily's Place is not a backup option. But they were told that several other locations were being considered if there was a lack of punk. He also adds that punk and AEW have had productive conversations this week and that the legal letters that Raj Geary reported earlier in the week were to stop him saying disparaging things about the company online. So there you go. That's the news right there. Uh, there's another video on screen. So go and click that and, and give that a little watch. And um, I think I might join uh, that Spotify party. Um, so yeah, here's a clip. Done for not beating Roman, everyone. Here's your reward. But it seems the sentiment of the belt being a secondary world title isn't just shared by fans, as one of the men competing for the belt itself feels the same way. That being AJ Styles.